Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Now I've been to a lot of places and for a major US city, Fresno, California might have the most depressing downtown I've ever visited. You'll see what I'm talking about soon, but trust me on this, it's run down, unappealing, uninspiring, and just blah. It's not like the place is falling down because people are leaving. There's a lot of people who have been forced out of the Bay Area because it's so expensive. Fresno is only two hours away, so a lot of people are coming here these days. I visited Fresno as part of a tour of struggling California cities in October of 2021, and I left wondering if Fresno is going to get better or if this is a sign of the times in this state. Right now we're on the south side of downtown right before dark. Soon we're going to drive around actual downtown so you can see what the rest of the place looks like. As you can see, there's a lot of homeless people here. Like many other cities in California, the really high cost of living means if you can't afford to get the hell out of the state, you're forced onto the streets. Of course, drugs are a problem here like they are all over the West Coast. Apparently, the city of Fresno has talked about moving its homeless population into former drug and prostitute infested motels that it bought and remodeled. We'll see if that actually happens or not. There's a lot of bad parts of Fresno, but we're not going to focus on those for this video. This is strictly a look at downtown. I covered bad areas of Fresno in another video. But briefly, the west side of Fresno has been home to substandard housing for decades now. A lot of the black residents in West Fresno have been complaining about lower life expectancy and bad air quality for years. But a lot of the black population in Fresno boned out and they've been replaced by Hispanic families. Today, 51% of Fresno is Hispanic, making it the third largest majority Hispanic city in the country. East Fresno is also older and more run down too. The north and south ends of Fresno are a little bit better. In those parts of town, there's new housing being put up all over the place and a lot of new restaurants and retail. Now Fresno does have some culture. It's really diverse. There's a lot of theaters and museums in town and it's home to a bunch of colleges. But Fresno is a large city with a lot of poor people. One in four residents here lives below the poverty line, including about four in 10 kids. That's just terrible. Fresno has about 550,000 people, making it the fifth biggest city in the state. The unemployment rate in Fresno is super high for California. Outside of healthcare or government jobs, there just aren't a lot of job opportunities in Fresno. But there's lots of crime. Gangs, drive-by shootings, drugs, kidnappings, sex trafficking, they're all real big problems here. The sheriff had put together a multi-agency gang enforcement unit to battle the gangs, but once gang problems settle into a place, they're often hard to eradicate. Overall, Fresno has one of the highest crime rates in the nation, where people have about a 1 in 25 chance of being victimized. Car break-ins are up a whopping 40% lately. You never leave something in your car in California, people. Not even a phone charger. They'll just break your window and take it. Or they'll just take your car. Fresno is in the top five for stolen cars in the nation. At its peak last year, 20 cars a day were stolen in Fresno. Can you imagine that? 20 cars a day? What the damn hell? They catch about 100 people a month stealing cars here, but they spend a couple days in jail before they let them out again to steal another car. It's just a cycle in California. Some people call Fresno no town because people here show no love or pity for anyone. And that is sad. There were 6,000 violent crimes here last year. Stabbings and shootings happen here all the time, like all the time. And drugs continue to plague the Central Valley too. Meth is a big deal here in Fresno. And there's a new form of meth that's making things horrible for drug users. It's supposed to be more addictive and damaging to the brain. Meth use alone is up 50% year over year here. There were more meth deaths here in Fresno than suicides, auto wrecks, murders, and accidents combined. The meth epidemic here in Fresno is so bad that even CNN sent a crew out to talk about it. And CNN usually turns its back on drug abuse. Now I know I harp on Democrat cities a lot, but Fresno hasn't had a liberal mayor in office since 1993. Fresno County leans liberal, but it's pretty close. There's a lot of farms all over this county and smaller communities with older white voters. Imagine how bad Fresno would be if it were controlled by Democrats. It's possible that might happen soon. You can grab a home here for about 340 grand. For California, that's like dirt cheap. But I do have to say, if you wanted to move to an affordable, conservative-leaning city, 
Fresno is pretty much one of the last few options you have in this state, outside of the far northern counties near Oregon. Because Orange County and San Diego are certainly not affordable anymore. Now that I think about it, Fresno might be the last big city where you can still afford to buy a home and not be browbeaten by liberal policies in California. Yet. Now Fresno's downtown used to be pretty nice. A hundred years ago, there was a fancy railroad depot and a bunch of somewhat lavish and opulent buildings. Most of those are gone now, either left to rot or completely abandoned. The downtown mall area is a shell of its former self too. Driving around Fresno at night can be really scary, actually. It's dark and seedy, and there really aren't a lot of places open past 8 p.m. And driving around at night, I didn't see a single police officer. The rule of thumb is, if you're going to move to the Fresno region, pick Clovis. It's way better there. Did you know Kevin Federline is from Fresno? What? K-Fed's from Fresno? Well, that pretty much tells me everything I need to know about Fresno. Goes to show you that anybody can come out of Fresno and make something of themselves. Although I'd say that I think K-Fed took advantage of Britney's money train a little bit. Huh, Mappy? I like listening to his music. <laughs> Whatever, you don't like his music. He doesn't have any good music. Get out of here. So tell me about Fresno, man. Like, um, I, I, I did not find it, um, you know, very exciting. I, I felt it was kind of like dangerous. There's a lot of homeless people. I hear about the crime and, the, and mm -hmm. all the just, it's just changed a lot in the last 20 years. Um, right. How do you feel about all that? Okay, so um, if we were to rewind back into the 1990s, Fresno was probably one of the places where you could lose your life like any given moment in a drive-by shooting or get, you know, the, the California had that explosion of gangsterism and gang activity. And um, the, these generations have now kind of grown up. The murder rate is way lower. Um, the, the shootings are way lower. I, I would say the 1990s was like the, the play, you know, now it's kind of like any other city in California. You know, you're going to have your shootings. You're going to have your crack cells and your prostitution in certain parts of town. Um, I agree. Yes, you are correct. Um, Fresno has always had a bad reputation. I think it's getting better, though. Um, more people. I think it's evolving. It's evolved. And Fre Fresno has its perks, believe it or not. Um, it has, you know, it's been growing. They've been building houses. They're stretching it out as far as they can and is, as far as the city limits go. So you have tons of new housing, new shopping centers, new retail um, entertainment. It's getting a lot cleaner. Um, again, people are evolving. So, um, like, unless you're, like, in the east side, west side, like, in the hood, you're pretty good. You go to work, you go shopping at your, your new grocery store that was just built like five years ago. Like it's really expanded. It's cheaper than anywhere else. And there's a reason the weather here is crazy. You're in the valley, so it's hot. You know, it's hot in the summer. You're not getting these coastal bay breezes like you would in the Bay Area or L.A. So um, you trade that for the cost of living and affordable housing. For those who are on like a budget or trying to buy a house or whatever, this would be where if you wanted to stay in California and not go to Texas and not go to Tennessee and all that, you buy here in Fresno. Yeah, I mean, I do agree that it's cheaper um, for sure. Um, and it is growing for sure. There's a lot of places in California that are not growing. And there's a lot of people that leave the Bay Area and they come to Fresno or Stockton to because they get pushed out because of the cost of living. Um, so I do give credit, Fresno credit for that. Um, the downtown area, though, like it, it's very dark and seedy. I felt like Gotham it was like City. Yeah, like it was just like unstimulating. Like I was driving around trying to find something to do at like nine o'clock, and there was literally, it was like shadows and like weird. I just, there's a vibe downtown at night. And, they, and I they, was just like, they won't update their downtown. The, the city hall members, who I think are more still looking out for the agricultural, the farmers. They're not thinking about today's youth. They're not t thinking about today's um, younger families. And, um, you know, for some reason, they just refuse to put their money. Like you said, I mean, we could be a flourishing city. We could be a really nice pot if they would just update downtown. No businesses want to come here, though. That's the thing, too. I think so the gap 
we do have the Gap Old Navy Banana Republic Distribution Center, like Big Whoop. But like, you know, they chose Fresno because of the cheap labor and the cheap land, right? And um, so you had a lot of transfers coming in through that. And then you, you've had, a, there's a few companies that have done that. But like, for the most part, you're right. Like if you're a corporation and you're located somewhere like Seattle or, or San Jose, um, your employees aren't going to want to go to Fresno. Like they're just, because what you said, like if you do, if you go back 20 years or whatever, it's always been like a dead little, like a cow town. The thing is we are the fifth largest city in California. There's almost 600,000 people here. Yeah, I'll give them that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's diverse. Uh, there's, there's, some, there's some culture there. You got the colleges, you got the college, the main school there. Um, you can see that people want it to be better. So that's good because there's a lot of cities I've been to where it, I was in Oakland and I, there's a lot of people that have that say they have Oakland pride. Um, but I didn't see anything in that city that looked like anybody cared a shit about. No, that place. Yeah. Oakland is grimy, man. Like no matter where you go, it's grimy in Oakland. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I hear and you. so at least, at least Fresno is not on that level. Um, but yeah, so like the crime, so like I hear, you know, car theft capital of the nation, car burglary capital, kidnapping capital of the nation, meth capital of California, like all those things stand out. Um, why Fresno? Okay, sociology. Um, the farmers. Um, so let's just, let's just get down to brass tacks, dude. So we had a wave of um, Laotian, Cambodian, and Hmong refugees that came here in the 80s. Um, because they didn't speak English or what have you, they were put in these, uh, what you would call the ghetto, right? Or the hood, like with the Hispanics and the other people who weren't getting them. Um, let's just say they didn't have a, a college education. They were making money on welfare. And these kids that were being brought up in these homes would eventually become gang members and things like that because you got to survive in these neighborhoods. It's just the way it is. And, um, so you're right away, you're starting off with, you're bringing waves of people. Your farmers are all your Latinos who, you know, like for the most part, um, our Chicano um, culture here in California, everyone speaks English. Most of the people were born here. If you're Hispanic, you were born here and you speak perfect English and you pretty much got a good job in a nice house. But then there's um, the other part of it where you, you don't speak English and you're just picking grapes, dude. Well, that's what Fresno was. If Fresno was the agricultural and the farmers were, so you had the Hispanics here that didn't speak. They're not Chicanos. They're, they're, um, they're uh, new to the country, right? Then you have these, the, the Southeast Asian thing, very different from the Filipinos in the Bay and the Vietnamese in the Bay and uh, the Korean, the people who came here on, whether on visa or came here through different circumstances. This, this um, our Asian community was the refugees that were who had helped out in the Vietnam War helped out the CIA in the United States and they were fled here because of communism the, the, their countries were coming back for them and they were just plopped here bro like they just <laughs> so this all of these ramifications all these repercussions that would end up making the city of what it is and then on the other side of that you have your like cowboy um western you know bull riding dudes out here right because that's what Clovis and Fresno kind of was too um, I would say by the eighties, you know, thing, we just, I don't know. I just think it had a bad start, like, because it was not the most desirable place to live in the very beginning, in the very first place because of the weather, the climate, and because of all the, um, already established cities on the coastlines and stuff that were already. So this was kind of like the dumping ground, if you will, seriously, if you think about it, um, government wise. It was already kind of just set up to be what it was, a truck stop, right? It was just from L.A. to the Bay. This is where you stopped and slept and got gas and snacks. Um, but somehow, some way, it just became like the fifth largest city in California. Um, so I just know those are some factors that why Fresno was like this. Why is it so poverty stricken? It starts with some of those things. <laughs> Fresno has come a long way in the past 100 years or so. The small farming community of the 1870s has now blossomed into the 65th largest city in our nation. But along with growth comes decay. 
As the city has expanded, some areas, particularly the older areas, have been sacrificed for new growth. But Fresno's downtown is a prime example of that. What was once the heart and lifeblood of Fresno has now become to some people the most undesirable crime-ridden part of the city. Who's to blame for downtown's negative image? Is it the city government, the people, or is downtown Fresno just a victim of circumstance? Uh, is it just too difficult to try to, I know it's easy for me to sit here and be like, why don't they make the crime go away? I mean, is it like to the point now that they're just trying to contain it? I think so. So that's the thing that I think, um, I, I don't want to say that's what you're, you're missing, but it has evolved. It has changed. There are now parts of Fresno that you would never believe is Fresno. There, it really has become, um, there's parts of this town that look like we're in, Sacramento or Citrus Heights or other parts of it, it, there's really nice parts and the city keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's the poverty stuff is becoming more isolated and more, um, unfortunately that when you're on the freeway 99 blowing through here, that's what you're going to see. Um, because you're not exiting and you're not driving clear across town to the new Starbucks and Pete's coffee and all this, you know, Edwards cinema and stuff. Um, you have no business there. So you kind of, what you see is what you get. And you're right. It's, it's horrible. It's the homeless and meth and, and all that. But um, I mean, like I said, I was living in the Silicon Valley and it, it we had all that there as well. Um, but it was more, you're right. It was more contained. It, they, we had much more um, prosperity there in that, in, the, in that part of California than you did the poverty, but it didn't, it didn't mean there weren't shootings, helicopters at night with searchlights on through the streets of, it's it, the same stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So, like the politics of Fresno, do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? Like, what, what's going on with all that? Okay, so yeah, like um, I'm sure your viewers come from both sides of the um, political spectrum, so I'll just tippy toe around it and say, no, um, there's no tippy toe in anything. Just say, all right. Well, I'm, right. A conser I'm a conservative Christian. I used to be a major screw up, so I can, I could kind of speak for both. You know, I, I used to uh, I I've, I've lived one hell of a life myself, but I've been in those neighborhoods that you're talking about. You know, hang, hanging out there with the wrong crowd and and doing the wrong things. And I had I grew up. You know, I grew up. Thank God. But um, we're Would more you, conservative yeah. here. We're more. It's more red here, bro. Like um, when the pandemic hit, California completely shut down. Fresno did not. Um, Gun shops remained open. Um, we have a sheriff's department here. We have a, a, a sheriff here who encourages every Fresnan to go out and get their uh, license to carry, gun permits. It's encouraged, not um, discouraged. Um, they, you know, the, the, we have a traditional police force, um, which is not racist at all, but just fair and, and just and righteous, I, I believe, you know, if, if you're breaking the law, you know, that's, that's kind of on you. Um, but no one's out looking to harm anyone or, you know, ruin anyone's life. It's just if I think this would be the place to be um, during like SHTF. If you are a Californian, Fresno would probably have more people out to help you and look out for you. There's more conservatives here. The farmers are still here. And even the inner cities have grown custom to that. And I think they even appreciate that. Um, there was never riots here. Even when Rodney King, back in the 90s, um, we had no riots here. Um, and all the way up to the more recent riots and things, um, people here knew better. They just knew better, don't, just don't get involved. There's not really a bunch of injustices here. There's no social injustices here. Like people take responsibilities for the crimes they commit here. Like you do the crime, you do the time. We don't, there's no blame game. and. You know, there's no, um, there's none of that. It's, it is what it is. And um, I would say that's one thing Fresno does have, in, have going for it is you got a pretty good city government kind of when it comes to those things. Like you're safe here. I, went, I mean, you're never completely safe, but it's certainly not L.A. or the Bay, you know, because they'll lock you down. They want to lock everything. I mean, they, they, we stayed open. We did as much as we could to comply with CDC, um, like our Denny's restaurants and stuff, did the out outdoor dining for a while. We did what we thought we had to do, like when the thing was a new phenomenon. But as time went by, people 
started to kind of realize you can probably go eat inside where the Bay area in Los Angeles, they, they, they still want to like hold adhere to the old pandemic stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that- I, yeah. They hold, they're holding people accountable, but like I hear people just like any other city in California that they're like, you know, catch and release or letting people out. Like, um, you know, jails are overcrowded and there's this whole California thing where like, you know, they're trying to release people, from serving full crimes so or terms so like you got people that will steal a car and like two days later they're back on the streets um is is that frustrating to people in fresno who are conservative and want to you can't you can't i mean if the the, okay so that takes me back to the 90s and yeah with stealing cars you'd be out the same day like because that's a a, i don't want to say it's a victimless crime because somebody went through a hardship but um, there's bigger fish to fry, man. There's people running around with guns and they're shooting people. And there, there really is like, a, yeah, there's home invasions and things get pretty wild. And I think that um, if your jail is too full and it's because you have a bunch of kids in here for GTA, let them go home. I would, I would say that too. You're right. Well, Fresno, Fresno is the shithole of California. There's no doubt, bro. Like there's no doubt. Like what you're saying is true. Like this is the least desirable place to live in California, but it's where you can stay in California and actually live a healthy life and never see any of that gang stuff. If you, depending on what side of town you're on, where you work, you, I mean, you'll be living in a brand new housing development that was just built last year. All your upgrades that you'll never see that stuff. You, you stay out of that side of town. So like I'm, you're, I'm like torn because like at one hand you're like Fresno's coming up and it's not as bad as it used to be and actually it has the potential and I like it here and then like the next sentence you're like it's a shithole of California and it I'm is. leaving and it is a shithole of California. Well, I'm leaving over more. Um, I'm leaving more over um, financial gain, financial prosperity. I, you know, selling my house gives me a way to get out of a 30 year cash out of house out of out of the state. And I don't like the, the California regulations, not Fresno regulations. This is a California thing. They, these mandates and restrictions are ridiculous. And it's from Gav Newsom, who's in L.A. So um, you are getting a little bit of mixed signal from me. But what, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not as bad as it was. And it, it is getting better. But it's never going to be the beautiful coastal cities in Southern California or Northern California. It's the San Joaquin Valley, man. You're in a valley. You're in a bowl. Everything's above you. Like the Bay Area is, is way up. It's a different breath, breath of fresh air. You don't have that breath of fresh air here. You are in the freaking dust bowl, you know, of like William Soroyan. <laughs> like, it's like, it is what it is. It is what it is. But, you know, if you're comparing apples to oranges, if you're comparing this to the other parts of Cali, then no, no way. Like, we don't hold the chance. You know. Yeah. No. What I'm comparing Fresno to is is a place that where there's not a lot of drug use, where there's not a lot of crime, and where there's jobs. <laughs> That's hey everyone. So it's pretty clear by now that elected leaders aren't gonna help you if you don't like what you saw in this video. Demanding change won't work. You're gonna have to do it on your own if you want to be safe and want your community to be a place where people want to live. You're gonna have to clean the place up yourselves. You're going to have to work with your friends and neighbors to lower crime. Politicians clearly don't care as much anymore. It's up to us. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation.